Hi everyone, I'm Ashley. Hi everyone, my name is Benjamin. In the previous video, we demonstrated how to set up a calibration curve using the external standard method. In this video, we will be showing you how to use the internal standard method to set up a calibration curve, as well as how the standard solutions are prepared. Do you know why internal standards are used? Internal standards are used to improve method accuracy and precision. By using them for quantification, it reduces the effect of interfering matrix components, minimizes sample processing errors and the variability of detection. To eliminate systematic errors from the instrument and background interferences, usually internal standard calibration method is used for quantification of compounds. The internal standard compound selected has similar chemical properties as the target compound. The use of internal standards is recommended in some situations, such as the preparation of biological samples and for samples with matrices with strong absorption properties. In both cases, loss of the target analyte can occur, and this will result in a lower amount of analyte being detected and quantified than what is initially present. Yes, this is correct. The calibration curve of the internal standard method uses the ratio of the peak intensity of internal standard to target compounds against the concentration ratio. The most important step for internal calibration is the accurate preparation of the standard solutions. We shall now demonstrate to you how to prepare the standards. For this experiment, the solutions used contain paracetamol and caffeine. Caffeine with a maximum absorbance wavelength of 273 nanometers is the target compound, while paracetamol with an absorbance wavelength of 243 nanometers is used as the internal standard. 260 nanometers was chosen as the wavelength to monitor, as both wavelengths have similar absorbance as this wavelength. 50% methanol is used as the solvent in this experiment due to its transparency in the measured wavelength range. We will be building the calibration curve with four different concentrations of caffeine, ranging from 10 ppm to 200 ppm. These standard solutions will be used to determine the concentration of caffeine in a tea sample. As the internal standard, the concentration of paracetamol is 50 ppm for all four standard solutions and the sample. Starting from the 1000 ppm stock solution of paracetamol, add 50 microliters to all five valves. Then, from the 1000 ppm stock solution of caffeine, add the volumes of 10, 50, 100 and 200 microliters into their respective valves. One hundred microliters of the sample is added into the sample valve. Finally, add in the solvent to make up the volume to one milliliter. With the solutions prepared, we can start our analysis. The system used for this experiment is the Shimadzu I series LC 2050C3D, which uses a photodiode array as a detector. Shimadzu's lab solution software was used to carry out both the real time data analysis and the data processing. The same Shimpak XRODS column as the previous video is used in this demonstration which has the dimensions of 50 mm by 3 mm and a particle size of 2.2 micrometers. The oven temperature is set at 40 degrees Celsius and an injection volume of 10 microliters. The mobile phase consists of water and methanol and has a flow rate of 0.8 milliliter per minute. This time, a gradient dilution program is used. The composition of the mobile phase starts at 15% methanol and held for one minute before increasing to 45% methanol over one and a half minutes. This was held for one minute to ensure that everything is washed out of the column before returning to 15% methanol within 0.1 minute and held for another two minutes. This allows the system to re-equilibrate before the next analysis is done. Starting from the real-time analysis window, a new method file is created using the instrument parameters mentioned earlier. Under the Data Acquisition tab, set the runtime and sampling frequency. 
Next under the pump section, the pump mode, flow rate, initial mobile phase concentration and pressure limits are specified. As gradient elution is used, it is also important that the gradient programming is set. As mentioned earlier the mobile phase concentration goes from 15% to 45% before returning to 15%. For the PDA detector, the D2 lamp is used. The wavelength range is set from 190 to 800 nanometers. The PDA detector allows us to view any wavelength within this range, making it easy to identify the maximum absorbance wavelength of each compound. The column oven temperature of 40 degrees Celsius is set under the column oven tab. Lastly under the auto sampler tab, the sampling speed and rinse mode are set. Save the method file and download the parameters before creating a batch file for real-time analysis. In the batch table, fill in all the relevant details. This includes the vial and tray number, sample name, sample ID, sample type, method file and data file. Once everything has been filled in, save the batch file and start the real-time batch run. Once the analysis is completed, open any one of the data files in the postrun window. The data processing parameters for the calibration method are then set in the method view. Click on edit to start changing the parameters. First, under the multi chrome tab, the wavelength of 260 nanometers is chosen. This allows us to view the chromatogram obtained at this wavelength. The parameters for the integration and identification tabs are then set. Our previous video has explained what each of these two tabs do as part of the data processing method file. The link to the video can be found in the description box or on the top right hand corner. What makes the data processing method for internal standard calibration different from the external standard calibration is in the next two tabs. Under the quantitative tab, the quantitative method needs to be set as internal standard. Then, the number of calibration levels, curve fit type, whether to force the curve through zero and units are also specified. Moving on to the compound tab, the names of the compounds present, their peak retention time and concentrations are added into the compound table. Under the type column, it is important that the compound type is changed to ISTD for paracetamol and target for caffeine. This tells the software which compound is the internal standard so that it can make the correct calculations to generate the calibration curve. After all the parameters have been set, click on the View button and save a new method file. Once your method is saved, open the post run batch and load your data files into the batch table. Ensure that the sample type of the lowest concentration standard is selected to initialize the calibration curve, then change the method file to the newly created data processing method file. Fill in the calibration level for each data file accordingly. Save the batch file and then start the post run batch run. After that is completed, open the data file of the standard with highest concentration. Just like for external standard calibration, the full calibration curve can be seen under the Calibration Curve tab of the Results view. By clicking on the data file of the sample and then going to the Compound tab, we are able to view the calculated concentration ratio of caffeine inside the tea sample. We have now come to the end of this tutorial on how to build calibration curves for HPLC analysis. Thank you for watching and please look forward to our future videos. Excellence in Science. Shimazu.